today we're going to be making our leather sheath for our marbles small camp axe. If you saw in one of our previous videos, uh, we treated the leather, which was incredibly stiff. We didn't treat this edge here. We treated it with that homemade uh, waterproofing cloth and leather dressing that we, we made from our beeswax ring and uh, some boiled linseed oil. And we'll put a link to the video at the uh, that video at the end of this video for you to check that out if you like. We're going to be using uh, some snaps, so you're going to need a, a fastener tool that works with the particular type of snap that you have. Uh, usually these come in sets, but you want to make sure that uh, you have the correct one. We're also going to be using what's called a Chicago screw. I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, it's, or it's called a Poston screw uh, to fasten one side of the sheath. What you're also going to need is a hole punching tool, a leather punching tool. Now you can use a regular punch or you can use this style. Either works fine. Something to sketch with, a piece of paper. Now you can, I have two different methods that I'm going to use or show you uh, for cutting this leather. One is just a regular sharp utility knife, a sharp razor blade in there. That'll work. These are one of my favorite things to use. These are a pair of Cutco shears. These things are so incredibly tough. You can see I, I need to clean them from the last application. I think I was actually trimming some plants <laughs> with them. They're so versatile. But these things are so incredibly tough. I've cut a penny in half with them. And it, the blades are perfectly fine. These, these things are amazing. If you can find these, if you can order these somewhere, I, I definitely would highly recommend it. I'm going to try and find them for you, find them for you, and put them in our online store. I'll put a link to it uh, on our blog, uh, which has uh, one of our pages on our blog is, is the online store. So we'll look for uh, these, and we'll put all the tools on there for you. So you, uh, you can go, and if you have this project to do, if you want to do this project, you can go directly there and find the tools that you're going to need to do so. Another thing you're going to need is a Sharpie to write on the leather. So let's get started. So let's go and start drawing what we want this to look like. I want this axe sheath to fold over the top of the blade here. This piece, kind of want, I want to cut out right here as it comes along the bottom of the blade. You now my blade edge is right here, so I'm going to need a good three eighths to maybe a half an inch to get the Chicago screw in there. Because these Chicago screws, you can either find a brass and aluminum. I was only able to find the aluminum ones at my local hardware store. Uh, but that's not going to scratch your your blade or, or dent your blade. You don't want to use anything steel that's going to mar the blade of the axe. So you want to leave enough room for these. And I can see I, I do need the head on these is a little bit wide. So I'm going to come out a little bit farther. As, like I said before, intricate or unique with this as you want. your axe sheath, it's your creativity, it's your time. I'll transfer this to our leather. And to start off I'm going to initially go a little bit big just to give us some working room some play in it, just in case we do make a mistake where it turns out to be too small, the leather's too stiff uh, to, to push together or pull together. And maybe I miscalculated exactly how much room I'm going to need for the Chicago screw. Whatever it may be, I'm just going to work this to be a little bit bigger. Now make sure you didn't 
you don't make the mistake of what I was just about to do was draw on the wrong side. You want that beautiful smooth sided letter on the front. There we go. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm going to switch to my shears. This is There's our, our sheath, or the begin, beginnings of it. Don't worry about these rough, rough corners. There, we'll sand those down later. Leather sands really nicely. And you want to, if you're matching a corner or an end, you can see I'm off a little bit right there. It doesn't match perfectly, but don't worry about it. Make sure our hole is appropriate for the size of the Chicago screw or rivet or whatever it is you're using. Cut small first because after you go and cut a hole that's too big, it's kind of hard to go back. A tool that I didn't mention before that is actually quite handy. My pen doesn't fit down in the middle of the post right there. So you can use a drill bit to mark where you want that rivet to be. Kind of give it a good twist. I don't know if you can see that, but it marked it quite nicely. You want your the edge of your Chicago screw to be not right on the edge, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch in. Give it some room to sand. I think that's a great spot right there. But obviously not contacting the blade too much. What we're gonna do is use our punch tool, put it right on there. Fold it over. Mark it with the drill bit. There we go. Good thing to have all the tools ready for the project. So you can see I was a little unprepared. I had to reach down and grab something. A screwdriver obviously is needed <laughs> for this project as we screw in the, uh, the post. It's coming together. Nicely. Yeah, you know that isn't perfect at the bottom, but we'll sand it down, we'll clean it up a little bit, and get it looking beautiful. Now we're going to set where we want our snap. I 
center it in this space. It'd be nice. Right about there. You can have four parts on setting a snap. There's that top button, the bottom portion. You know, and I'm not exactly sure the terminology for all, all of these, but obviously there's four parts. They squeeze together. And uh, that's what you need. This outside one's easy to set. There's a cup here so it doesn't mar the button portion of the snap. Just set it in to punch it down. Gonna need a hammer. and the punch itself. Just set it down in the center portion of that rod. Make sure it's set properly. To give a good few whacks. So on this one, we don't need to protect this nice cap end. They provide a different side to it that fits in nicely with that post there. And then you just do the same thing. There's our sheath, you know. From here, you can continue to modify and, and carve this out how you want it. Maybe a little bit on the front. And right now, it works. It's not going to slip off. It's tight on there. You know, this one's a little bit loose. But that's all right. It's the first time we worked with one with this axe, and uh, it's not going to come off for sure. It's solidly on there. You're never going to be able to pull that off. What we're going to do is we're going to sand and match up the edges here, trim it up. You know, a tool I find incredibly useful for a lot of different things is a Dremel. So on the edge of the Dremel, or on the end of the Dremel. I have a sand bit, sanding bit. I use this for so many things. Cutting, you know, there's a little diamond wheel that's so versatile. It comes in handy. You can do that all the way around and craft it however you want to craft it. There it is. Perfect. No. Fun. Yes. Put a little bit more of a curve in there. And on this side. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. If you like our video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.
Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. You know, there's something just very satisfying and therapeutic about crafting something with your own two hands. It's a heck of a lot of fun, too. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to our channel and come visit us at countrylivingexperience.com to read our blog and visit our tool store. Also, click on the video on the right-hand side of the screen for more information about how to make your own waterproofing dressing for leather and fabric. Thank you. Have a great day.